peoples! Welcome to Hilo Finally Speaks, but technically they already did by accident on a live stream. I edited that out though, and also I have obviously, like very obviously, changed the way my voice sounds for this. Um, so that's what that weird like echo thing is. I, it's there on purpose, so that you can't really hear me. Don't worry about it. Also, there's not going to be music in the background. Rip. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, shout out to Mel Child for wanting to hear me ramble about this character. Go give that child some love. Her channel is in the description. Now, on to the video. Today, I'm drawing Quada. It's literally said like this. I don't know, man. I was like 11 or something. Just, just let me live. She's an OC that I absolutely adore. You might recognize her from my most recent map part. Don't worry though, she's not actually dead. It was, it was just for that one thing, I promise. Like literally all of my characters, Quata Fear started as a character for role-playing warrior cat. On Minecraft. <laughs> I'm so cool, am I right, fellas? Check out the Fallen Light servers though, they're like actually really fun, and all the people there are super nice, and I definitely enjoy it every second of my time there. Anyways, I noticed that a lot of disabled characters were warriors, and especially blind characters like Jayfeather, Longtail, even Brightheart for a bit, got a pretty terrible rep. They are shoved off to the elders or medicine cat's dens and forgotten. But like, high key, most disabled animals don't have very many issues getting around, and in a society like warriors, this should have been even less of a problem. They can take care of each other and, you know, teach each other. Like they're supposed to. <laughs> Not only that, but while role-playing, I noticed that when other people had disabled characters, they did what the books did. And that bothered me. A lot. Like, why can't a blind or deaf or three-legged cat be a warrior or a loner? With Kodov, I am to fix that. Kodov has, excuse me if I pronounce this wrong, I, I will, because I cannot speak for the life of me. Uh, I'll link the Wikipedia article for it in the description if you guys care about it. I doubt you guys do, but that's fine. Anophthalmia. I did my best. Basically, she was born without any eyes at all, or just like super tiny eyes, but I went with she doesn't have any eyes at all. She just has the empty eye socket. It's a genetic disorder thing. That's why other parts of her look a bit wonky, like the misshapen eye sockets and her nose and her ears and even her brain, like her body type, it's all because of this genetic abnormality. As a kid, she was labeled defective by her parents, and once she had learned to hunt, she was sent away from her family. Most cats are scared of her. Some pity her, but everyone treats her differently. Society. All societies, not just cat ones. It is, uh, uh, this is... I'm going after your homes. I'm going after your lives right now. Okay, listen up. <laughs> okay, so all societies, they make life difficult for those who are able-bodied. And seeing how people interacted with Kodov in roleplay was really interesting to me. You know, as an 11-year-old. <laughs> um, there was a certain level of hesitance. People really didn't know how to treat her or what to expect. Watching people dance around her was A, hilarious, but B, also saddening. You see, Kodov is like a really nice person. Too nice. Like, doormat worthy nice. She lets people do what they want with her. And people are fine with that, you know, they expect it. But at the same time, she's like, resourceful. She's smart. Her senses are dialed up to 10. She doesn't struggle with hunting or fighting. And that kind of stuff is what really freaks people out. You know, disabled people can't do things themselves. Oh, that's madness. How could anyone ever say that? People like it when a disabled character or person seems weak. At a glance, quote off is. Like I said, she's a doormat. But it's more that she doesn't want people to view her even more poorly than they already do. It's simply easier to let people do what they want or think. Why waste energy fighting back when no one's going to listen? And suddenly, you see, she really isn't that weak. She simply likes her solitude. She knows what she's doing. She doesn't need some other person to step in and to help her. Her world, her life, is what she's always known. She has no trouble navigating it. You know, this really wasn't so much rambling about Quadoff as it was rambling about, you know,
America. Oh, but oh well, it be like that. Tee <laughs> hee. Now, here's the original description I wrote for her. Be warned, it's really chonky and also old. I've changed a lot of stuff since I wrote it originally. So, take it with a grain of salt. Kura, or Quaking of the Fierce, I made it like an acronym. You don't at me. She's a tall, thin she-cat with short, pointed fur. Her base coat is yellowish, while the pointed areas, her face, ears, tail, and paws, are a greenish color. She has a few scars and keeps vines tied to the left side of her body. There is no fur in her nose or at the center of her ears. There are three purple gray spots on her chest, a tan spot on each of her ears, under her eyes, and a tan spot on her tail. There are stripes the color of her base coat in the middle of her muzzle and going from the top of her eye socket. The underside of her front right paw is tan. She was born with... Uh, the word I cannot say in both eyes. She usually keeps her eyes closed as a result. She scratches at her eye sockets when stressed, anxious, which she is often, or angry. The condition also led to other abnormalities, such as breathing problems, poorly formed eye sockets, misshapen ears, and a malformed nose. This is why there is no fur at her nose. Most other cats are scared of her and avoid her when possible. She is a bit of an urban legend in her area, and kids are told to avoid the eyeless goblin living in the caves. Her parents abandoned her when she was weaned, thinking she was a curse. She has some trust issues because of this. She's a loner and is able to hunt quite well, despite her condition. Some kind humans also feed her every other day. She uses her whiskers and tail to guide her. She isn't fond of her solitude, but is too nervous to seek a friend. Most of the time, she sits alone in fields, smelling flowers, and searching for prey. Overall, she doesn't want to cause any trouble, and loves to help others when she can. She's very kind, but a bit too cautious for her own good, but she doesn't realize either of these things. If you noticed, a few things have changed. She is more okay with her solitude now, for one. She's also less cautious, and a bit of her backstory has been tweaked since this, this description, especially with, you know, her being more out there on her own. I had shifted some things that I originally wanted because people freaked out about her, but now I'm switching them all back. So yeah, there are no humans here. She's living her life by herself, her best life, you know, if you like that. <laughs> Overall, though, like, the way she looks and such, that's all the same. Now, let's talk a bit about this drawing, which is almost done. <laughs> wow! In this image, Clodoff is supposed to appear small. Two flowers tower over her as she crouches. Some might notice she looks a bit like a rabbit. Why? Because she's prey to society. Yeah, big brain cell time. Looks like my earlier monologue did have to do with this. Oh, whack, am I right? She is also not the vocal queen of this piece. I want you to see her second, or even last. Society tends to ignore disabled voices, after all. She's also in the point of deepest shadow, though I do lighten her up. I don't know if I already have, because I'm not watching the video as I record this, or whatever. She is overshadowed by everyone else and their assumptions of her. I always aim for dreamlike looks with her. The world is something only in her mind. She doesn't know how the world actually looks. It's more about feelings. That's why the lighting is fuzzy and why the proportions are all a little weird. I did something like this in the map part with her. If you haven't checked that out, I'll link it below as well. It's like seven seconds long, so uh, check it out, please. I need that watch time. There's a storybook much like uh, the ones that begin with Once Upon a Time. At least that was the look I was going for. I don't know if I really got that across, but I did my best. Once again, the proportions are strange there, and so are the shapes. It was more about feeling. Cold, and then hot, and then cold again. Here, it's that same pattern, just reversed. Now it's hot, and then cold, and then hot again. I really don't know if I can keep this up for much longer. I am like, literally trash when it comes to scripting things. Let me talk quickly about her sign. Um, if this was real life, she wouldn't have so much green in her colors. She sees herself as green. She's actually more of a honey color. Her eye sockets are also way smaller than in her brush sheet. It's for that nice aesthetic look, you know? Her whiskers always have to be showing. In this image, I actually forgot to do that while recording rip, but I'll add it later. It's... Ah, uh, it's fine. Everything worked out in the end. <laughs> Ruh -ruh, I'm almost out of time. Um, this kind of thing was fun. Let me know if you want me to talk more often. But for now, have a great day, all my wonderful peoples. See you again soon.